Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're doing well. Today I'm coming at you from sunny Marbella here to break down our demand gen strategy and a full campaign setup guide for 2024. Um, now, my name's George. I run a Google ads agency called The Paid Search Company. Um, we are the leading Google ads e-commerce agency in the space at the moment, and we're managing well over 500K a month in ad spend, just shy of a million a month these days, actually. And uh, as you can see, this is a specific client of ours that we've just launched this demand gen strategy for, and it's generated some awesome results, okay? Now, as you can see, in the last uh, 18 days here, We've spent 7.4K to produce 15.5 at over a 2X return on ad spend. Now, before you get, uh, you know, too crazy, obviously that isn't the highest ROAS in the world. However, this is almost exclusively cold traffic. Okay, so we are fully targeting cold traffic with these campaigns. Um, we don't have any brand coming into our targeting, uh, which I'll explain to you a little bit about how to do in a second. Um, so these results are bang on where we want them to be. Um, and the most exciting thing is how you know, aggressively it's been able to scale. Um, had a few dips here and there, but overall the, there's a massive uptrend uh, visible here. So very, very exciting strategy and definitely something that you can implement in your own accounts um, to add an extra, you know, 10K a month, 15K a month, maybe even 50K a month, who knows. We have other clients uh, re generating even more revenue with these campaigns, but I felt like this account was the best example here to show. So let's jump in and walk you through how we set this up. Okay, so I'm coming to another one of our accounts here that isn't currently running demand gen. It is doing, however, fantastically well. 14K in spend and 55K in rev, but that's a story for another day. So as you can see, we've got a very simple structure here, but all we're doing in this video is focusing on demand gen. So what we would want to do is come to the campaign view, go to campaigns and click this blue arrow in the top left to create a new campaign. We would want to choose a sales goal here because, well, there's no point in choosing any other goal. And that's extremely, extremely important. Okay, cool. So we're going to choose the sales goal. We're going to get rid of any uh, unnecessary conversion actions. All we're doing here is optimizing for purchases and we're going to go ahead and continue. Cool. So now we're going to have the option to select demand gen. We've got search, PMAX, display, shopping video, but demand gen is what we want here. And this is a campaign type that is designed to drive demand and conversions on YouTube, discovery, Gmail, specifically with image and video ads. So it's a very top of funnel campaign type. It's here to compete with the likes of Meta, the likes of TikTok, and it's, it's going to allow you to generate top of funnel new customer awareness in a way that search can't, in a way that performance max can't. Okay. Um, so that's what we're going to be choosing here. Okay. Let's go. So you'll notice when you get into the demand gen campaign that the campaign flow looks a little different. It's a bit similar to what Performance Max is like. You've got the campaign level up here, you've got the ad group level up here, and you've got the ad level down here. Almost maybe even similar to the Meta Ads Manager, okay? So first things first, we wanna start with a very consistent naming convention. So what we like to do is just the name of uh, our agency. Of course, this isn't really necessary for you if you're just a brand owner. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and do the campaign name, so demand gen. Then we're gonna go ahead and, and focus on what are we actually targeting here, okay? so. Um, when it comes to demand gen, um, you know, obviously we're running ads across, uh, you know, discovery, YouTube, etc. We want to have some level of segmentation. I would recommend starting off by focusing on your best selling products or product categories. Okay. Um, even very simply just having only one ad group, quite frankly, um, to start with and just adding in your winning creatives. That's a great place to start. From there, you can then segment ad groups uh, based on a variety of different factors. Okay, so the uh, ad group level is where you control the audience options, all right? So maybe you wanna have one ad group with no audience targeting and just let the campaign go broad. Then test another ad group with specific audience targeting um, and, and run those side by side. Or have uh, the same targeting options, but just different ads in each ad group, for example. There's many different ways you can do things. Um, but that's that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go demand gen. We're going to go best sellers, but you know something like that. Uh, we're going to go the excuse me the the um, bid strategy that we're going to be using. Okay, so we'll get to that uh, in a little bit. But we're really focusing on conversions here. Okay, so conversions, and then we're going to go for the location. Of course, we want to choose a specific location. So let's just do the US, for example. Now, first things first, you're going to be seeing here the product feeds option. So use a product feed with your campaign to show the most relevant products in your ads. I think this is a fantastic option to choose. Okay, as we know, guys, shopping ads are what generate over, well over, at least for us, well over 60% of revenue for all of our clients, okay? And a product feed ad is, uh, including a product feed, that's including shopping ads in and around your, your demand gen ads, okay? Um, so for example, you'd be seeing an ad on YouTube and then if you tick this uh, option to the right, here you would be then seeing below, um, 
relevant products uh, to the ad. Uh, okay, so for example, go and add the GMC here. Um, obviously, this is to do with Merchant Center. Um, although apparently here we don't have enough SKUs, so we'll take that off for now. But um, as you, this is a pretty low SKU uh, brand. Um, but nonetheless, that's what I would definitely do myself. Um, and so that's that option. Then you can choose the campaign goal, so conversions, clicks, or conversion value. Now here we don't have the options to change the conversion value just yet because we haven't got any conversions, all right? So before you can go to a conversion value, you've got to start with conversions, and that's what we'd recommend anyway. Just to speed up learning, just focus on volume of sales, first of all. Conversion goals, obviously we want to just set to purchases. And in terms of t setting a target cost per action, I would not recommend that you do this, okay? Because right now, we don't have any data on how this campaign will perform when it comes to uh, conversions. So here we could obviously set a, a, a target cost per cost per acquisition, target cost per uh, uh, CPA. And uh, again, we would not do this until we are, are at least 30 days into the campaign with a good level of data behind us. Um, and then what we would do is we would simply look at the last 30 days, see what kind of CPAs we've been getting, um, and then probably set a TCPA at that level or a little bit higher. Uh, but for now, we want to let this campaign run uh, on Un, you know, uh, 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 unlimited and see what we can do with a maximized strategy and then go from there. Budgets, obviously we want to set a daily budget. Now in terms of what do I recommend? Um, you know, really, uh, this is just my personal preference, but anything under 50 pounds a day is really probably not gonna get adequate data. Certainly we wouldn't go less than 30 pounds a day or $30 a day. Um, you know, I think, I think that's a good place to start. Um, definitely no less than $30 a day uh, for sure. But you know, we would we would typically start around there. Of course, it's all all to do with your average order values. Okay, so for example, if you're selling a product that has an average order value of, you know, two thousand pounds, you're probably not going to get any sales for fifty pounds a day. Okay, if your average order value is two thousand, then you you have to have a much higher daily budget. That's just how it goes. Whereas if you're selling a, a skincare product for ten pounds, then there's a good likelihood that this is is an adequate sufficient budget. Okay, so you got to play around with that. Um, if your AOVs are higher, just prepared to start by spending more and then seeing where you, where you get from there, okay? Um, so location and language, uh, obviously we do wanna make sure that we set a specific uh, location target. So here we're gonna go for the United States, as we said, um, and obviously there's no harm in just simplifying things and making sure that we select English here. Obviously if our video ads are in English, then that's gonna be pretty important, okay? Now I would just generally ignore this, okay? This is not going to, uh, really be that accurate in our in our experience it, it really just isn't so uh yeah keep that in mind now devices okay so uh, you know typically what we would do when we're when we're going and trying to uh run or optimize for youtube shorts placements is we would exclude all uh devices other than mobiles so that would just look something like this so we're only running ads on mobile devices okay however what we've started to find is that if we are just even using youtube shorts ads um you know, the kind of short form format is it will just run on mobile devices anyway. So maybe just start with show all, all eligible devices. This is something you could simply change later, okay? It's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, and then ad schedule, I wouldn't touch that. Third party measurement, no need uh, for that. Uh, campaign URL options, this is for if you want to add UTMs. And Google Video Partners, this is great to turn off, okay? We only want to be serving on high quality traffic on Discovery and YouTube. We don't want to go really into display. It's, it's a little bit... Uh, it's a little bit uh, not what we want, okay? Great, so now we're gonna get to the ad group level. So this is really where we get to work, okay? So as I say, each ad group uh, should be uh, based on a theme, okay? So in my opinion, that's how we like to structure things. So, you know, thematic ad groups. So for example here, if we are going to, in this ad group, include UGC talking head videos, then that would be what, what, we, what we do, right? Um, and then maybe another ad group, we just wanna have static ads of the best-selling product and another ad group we wanna have long form YouTube ads of the product, whatever it is. Um, so so that was that's kind of how we do it. But again, there's, there's other ways. So that's grouping by creative. You could also, as I say, group by audience. So you'd have the same creatives. And then here you would just test different audiences. What's important is that you're just kind of testing one variable, okay? Because you obviously want to be looking at the performance of the ad groups and assessing which is performing the best. And if you're targeting, you know, if you're doing different audiences and different ads, then you don't know what is contributing to the to the different difference in performance um, as accurately as you would if you were just you know, testing one different thing. Uh, so here we're gonna do that. And then obviously with the audience uh, section here, very similar to Pmax, okay? You can come in here, create a new audience. Um, and what I, I would recommend very simply is 
Well, first of all, test no audience, all right? In fact, in that uh, demand gen campaign that I just showed you, we're not even running an audience, we're just letting it go broad. And I mean, this is very similar to Meta. What we often find is just letting the campaign go broad and find the audience for you um, actually sometimes produces better results. But if you do want to create an audience, make sure that you don't include any remarketing. So don't include any of your data because this is just going to be all things like website visitors and this is going to then turn the campaign into a warm campaign. We want to separate out warm and cold traffic always. So if you're going to do anything, you can come in here, create a new segment with uh, relevant keywords. Okay, so custom segments are to do with keywords and uh, competitive URLs. And then you can come in here and also add in, uh, in in market segments, I would say as well. That's pretty useful. Um, and then you can come down here and also change the demographics. Um, just make sure to not include your data uh, here. Um, and then that's that. Okay, so what do I recommend? I recommend testing. Okay, maybe have two demand gen campaigns, one with an audience, one without, um, or even two different ad groups, one with an audience, one without. Okay, it's another thing that you can go ahead and test. Um, and we would definitely turn use optimized targeting off. Okay, so initially we want to turn optimized targeting off when we are first getting started, because if we don't, Google is going to go all over the place, um, and the targeting is going to be very, very, very inaccurate. Uh, we like to use no optimized targeting to start with. Can be an option to scale things further down the line, but that's just that. Okay. And then when it comes to the ads creation thing, here we are. So we have different options for creating ads. We can do single image ads, video ads, or carousel image ads. Okay. Uh, again, very, <laughs> this is giving me very, very similar vibes to Meta. Um, and obviously, you can choose to come in here um, and create a new ad or duplicate the ad down here. Um, so as I say, we want to, you know, more or less good practices just to kind of have ads that, that match in each ad group. Um, so, you know, for example, we would have an ad group with just video ads. So I can come in here and simply paste a YouTube video, which is one of my shorts. Um, and this is now going to run as a YouTube short ad. And even better, you can choose where your videos show. Okay, so this is the huge thing that demand gen lets you do that typical traditional YouTube campaigns don't do is you can actually come in here and select shorts if you want to run, for example, a short form video. Okay, um, and that's, yeah, that's, it's awesome. It allows you just to get absolute, uh, you know, reassurance that you're not going to be wasting money on in-feed or in-stream with just running on shorts. Now, this is feature is in beta, so maybe you don't have it, um, but we, we've had it on, on multiple different accounts. So, uh, yeah, so that's an example of, of how we would run a video ad. Of course, an image ad. Um, you're, you're going to have, hopefully, image ads already in your account, so you can come in here, select a specific image ad, save that, um, and that's going to be able to uh, be run. You can obviously add up to 20 different images uh, per ad, and, and Google's just going to go through and split test each one. Um, but again, you, you know, you have to choose. You can't have an ad that's also a video ad. You, you have to, you know, as you know. Um, and then you can add up to five headlines, up to five descriptions, um, a CTA. Okay, so obviously we would always choose shop now. Don't choose automated, um, and add in the business name there as well. And then, of course, you have your final URL. So where are you sending this traffic? You would put that in here. Um, to uh, direct the traffic to where you want to go. Um, and then they basically have one of two options. Either they click shop now and get directed to this final URL, or if you turned on that product feed option earlier, they can simply click on one of your products from the ad and go straight to that product page. And uh, that's also going to be a very high likelihood of uh, a conversion. And here you can simply preview your, uh, your ad on different placements. So on the discovery page, what does it look like on Gmail? What does it look like on YouTube? As you can see, there's a lot of YouTube uh, in-feed stuff these days um, popping up. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. And then you can click this down here and really see like a nice view of all of the different placements, which I absolutely love. And so, yeah, that is how we would go ahead and set up a campaign. You would then go to review and it would give you the option to publish your campaign, all right? Um, and so, yeah, that's everything. Uh, that's how we go ahead and structure our, our demand gen campaigns. Now, typically, we're really only focusing on video ads at the moment for our clients. Um, you know, uh, as I say, multiple different asset groups, different video ad themes. We find short form video ads convert the best. Um, so, you know, if you've got any from your meta traffic or your TikTok ads, you can pull them in here and start running them. Um, fantastic, fantastic way of getting a few extra conversions for your brand. But anyway, that's everything. If you are interested in scaling your own Google Ads or launching your own demand gen campaign, we can take care of it all for you, all right? We've got millions of millions of dollars of ad spend under our belt, um, and we'd love to be able to help. Um, and if you are interested in just scaling your overall Google Ads account, if you're thinking that things could be better, that could be improved, book a one-to-one -one call with me down below. We'll have a look in there for free, um, and we'll give you a long laundry list of things that could be improved. All right, appreciate you watching this one. Thank you. See you soon.